Amen. I don't know what happened this morning. I don't know if it's because we forgot to turn on the heat that it's cold in here, but it doesn't have to be cold spiritually. We can start a fire. Amen. And when the Holy Ghost fire starts burning on the inside, uh, it can start burning on the outside. Come on, let's just praise the Lord for a second. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. We will work. Our feelings have nothing to do with it. We will rejoice and be glad in it because you made this day. You allowed us to see it. You've given us another opportunity to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. God, not only are we grateful for what you've done, the provision, the protection, oh God, but we're grateful, oh God, for who you are. We're thankful and we're praising you because you are God. You're worthy of all praise because you are the majesty of majesties, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our Lord. God, and we thank you for that today. And God, we just come to you today and presenting our bodies as living sacrifices, God, in worship. We worship you today. We present ourselves, all that we are, all that we have, all of our existence, we present that to you today in the name of Jesus, that you may inhabit and use us, that you would uh, be in us and, and operate through us, oh God. That you will reveal to us your divine will, your purposes, and your plan today. God, your word is always good. It's always effectual, oh God. But, oh God, the soils are different. God, I pray that you till the soils of our heart. Not only till it, but fertilize it so that we not just be 30-fold productive. Not that we just be 60-fold productive. But, God, that we would be 100-fold productive in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that that word would germinate. Oh God, and not turn us loose, but would spring up in our life and we'll gain and we'll eat of the fruit, oh God, that developed from the seeds that were planted here today. God, we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Is there anyone, if there's anyone in the house under the sound of my voice that are listening to this later that does not know Jesus, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would arrest them and convict them and cause them to cry out to you. And I pray that you would save them in the name of Jesus that they would be part of the kingdom of God and begin to enjoy the benefits of salvation. God, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Wow, one twelfth of the year is already over. Where did it go? They said uh, 2024 was going to be an up and down year. And wow, we made it through uh, January with no problem at all. Amen. Praise God. We thank God because God is our protector. We're still living under the shadow of the wing of the Most High. Yes, yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I just thought for this month, um, uh, many of you know that I, I, I love to, one of, one of my favorite books in the Bible is Ephesians. And uh, because it's so powerful and, and, and he... They, they seem to be a church at the time of the writing without flaw. So he told, was teaching the Ephesus church how to go on from the foundation and become and, and all the great things that they could do and be in God, having on the whole armor of God and sitting in the heavenlies and high places, you know, with uh, the enemy under his feet and all of that. Uh, but then I, I started looking into Col Colossians and I said, well, you know, I kind of like Colossians. <laughs> And it's, the Word of God is funny like that. When you're reading the Word of God, you say, wow, I really, oh, this is really good. Mm -hmm. And so your favorite book or the favorite passion of the scriptures often becomes the one uh, God is currently dealing with you. So I just thought for the month of February, uh, we will look at the book of Colossians. There's a lot in Colossians. Uh, it is written by Paul the Apostle and I don't know, maybe Bible scholars don't have enough to do, but there are some Bible scholars who are debating who wrote the book. All you have to do is look at the very first word in the first chapter or the first verse of the book. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's better things to, to, to discuss and to debate. He said, I'm Paul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but like Ephesians, where you can divide uh, Ephesians into two parts, you can divide Colossians into two parts. It's uh, the first two chapters is four, four chapters. First two chapters are, are doctrinal. 
Uh, in other words, they tell you who Christ is. It's, it's, it's the foundation. It's the doctrine of, of, of our, our faith, our belief. Uh, and it's all about the supremacy of, of Christ. But the second two, or the last two chapters in the book, are practical. They tell you how to, list, uh, uh, how to live, how to submit yourself to Christ. But just a little bit more on, on the book of Colossians. Uh, let me see. Since I looked all this up, uh, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, it was written by Paul while he was in prison in Rome around 60 AD. Uh, and it was to the church of Colossae, uh, which was started by a man by the name of Epaphus, E-P-A-P-H-A-S. And we'll, we'll read his name in, in the first chapter there. Paul had never been to Coloss or Colossae uh, like he's been to Ephesians and many of the other churches he wrote to. Um, where is Colossae? Colossi? Uh, it's in modern-day Turkey, about 350 miles from Istanbul. And I know Sister Teresa knows where Istanbul is. We spent the night there uh, because of our plane delay uh, in Turkey. But it, it's only ruins today. It was probably destroyed by an earthquake. Okay, now you know everything there is you need to know about Colossae. All right. And I just want to read this little thing, and we're going to start at chapter 1. Paul purpose to, it, his purpose is to show that Christ is preeminent, first and foremost in everything, and the Christian's life should reflect that priority. Because believers are rooted in him, alive in him, hidden in him, and complete in him, it is utterly inconsistent for them to live life without him. We, we find all those in hymns in the book of Ephesians. Now, let's go to Colossians 1, <clears throat> verse 1. Uh, my intent is to get through the first chapter, but seeing as there's 28 verses, uh, uh, we don't, I don't expect to make it, but we'll see how far we make it today. Uh, because I, I'm told I'm only allowed about 20 minutes. Uh, ha, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. By the other Holy Ghost, uh, as, as uh, Larry Randolph would say. Um, there's the main Holy Ghost, and then there's Mrs. Holy Ghost. Anyway, uh, Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, we know that Timothy often traveled with the Apostle Paul. Verse 2, to the saints and the faithful brethren who in Christ who are in Colossae, or Colossae uh, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, we give thanks to God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints. Because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you, you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as it has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth, as you also learned from Epaphras, that's the man who likely started the church there, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. Verse 9. And this is the Apostle Paul's prayer for the saints at Colossus. In, uh, uh, in Ephesians, we see two prayers of Apostle Paul uh, in Ephesians 1 and and then again, he has another prayer in Ephesians 3. This is his prayer for the church here in verse 9. It says, For this reason also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. That's his prayer, number one thing. He wants you to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Filled with the knowledge of his will. Hallelujah. 
someone asked the question, well, how do I know his will? How do I know what God really wants? Three, three ways I've, I've found to, to find the, the will of God. Number one way, we can find the will of God by the counsel of his word. Yep. Let's read the word. Amen. I don't know the will of God. Have you read the Bible? How often do you read the Bible? Do you have a Bible? <laughs> I know you have one open uh, in your, your coffee table, uh, but have you ever read it in your home? Well, let's start there. What does the word of God say? Yes. Psalms 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with mine eye. Joshua 1, 8 says, the book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate it on in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So there's only two times a day that you need to dwell or think or meditate on the Word of God, and that's daytime and nighttime. Yeah, that, yeah, that pretty much covers it. So God is saying it's not just enough to read the Word of God. You need to meditate on it. I can't tell you how many times through high school uh, I, I had subjects or difficult subject material and, you know, I'd come home frustrated. Mom, I just can't get it. I just can't get it. And she said, well, read over it again. Read over again. And a lot of books tell you uh, if you put something in your head as you're going to sleep, oftentimes when you wake up, you'll have the solution. And I can't tell you how many times I'd wake up in the morning and get all my homework done uh, before Bible study at breakfast time around the table. Uh, in the morning uh, and it's just amazing and so God is saying this is what you need to do you need to get the word of God even if you don't understand it keep repeating it to yourself keep saying it keep declaring it all the month of January we declared about the gates of our city the gates of our lives the gates in our lives that we want open gates we want closed keep declaring it keep saying it there's power in your words yeah. So that's what Joshua 1.8 says. Psalms 119, 105. You all know this. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, as I was reading it this time, I saw something uh, that I never really recognized before. God's word will not only illuminate your near path, but he wants to illuminate your far path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet right here close to me, but it's all also a light unto my path. I don't have to worry about what's out there. I can be forewarned about what's out there because yes. God's word will illuminate that. Yes. The word of God, Apostle Paul says, we're not uh, unaware of Satan's <coughs> devices. They're illuminated by the word of God. <coughs> I'm not going to make it through this chapter. Anyway, praise the Lord. Uh, where is verse 10? That, oh, let's see. Where am I? Wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful. Yes, yes. Let's start with. Let, yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. Amen. Let's read verse 9 again. I can't find where I am. For this reason also, we have since day and night heard it. Do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. That's where we stop. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Wisdom and understanding are the products of knowledge. Wisdom can't do anything. Wisdom can't operate if you don't have any knowledge. Amen. Amen. We've heard for years, if you've been in this church for years, you've heard not only me say it, but you've heard my dad say it for decades. Wisdom needs something to work on. Wisdom is knowledge applied, is what he would always say. Wisdom is knowledge applied. It's good to know something, but... Wisdom is know when to use it, when to utilize yes, it. Yes. Mm. You know, because when you get a flat tire and you have the knowledge on how to cook asparagus, it doesn't help with the flat tire. Yeah. So wisdom is how to apply what you know, to take what you know yes. and use it to help benefit you. Understanding is comprehension. I've heard people re regurgitate uh, uh, different things. 
They know the Gettysburg Address. They can recite the preamble to the Constitution, but they have no idea what it means. They have no comprehension. So God is saying, I want you to have the knowledge of my will. You know the will of God by the word of God. I, I said by three things, but I didn't give you the labor. By the, the comfort of God's uh we know God by the counsel of his word. Yeah, yeah. yeah, see, I didn't finish. I need to read my notes. <laughs> we know the will of God by the counsel of his word and by the comfort of God's peace. Sometimes when uh, a situation arises, I'm going to get back to the, the, the wisdom and understanding in a minute. The knowledge of his will. We know it by the counsel of his word and we know it by the peace. Sometimes someone can say something to us and for some reason it just doesn't sit right with us. Sometimes we can go into a place and say, you know what, I know this is a church. The mothers all have their sequin hats on and you know their lacy handkerchiefs covering their knees and the preachers are all dressed in nice robes and what have you. But I don't feel the presence of God. It just doesn't, something's not right. It, there's no peace. What does Colossians say? I have a, a Colossians chapter 3, verse 15a says, And let the peace of God rule your hearts. If you know you're in right standing with God, some alarm bells will go off when situations aren't right. Sometimes the, the Lord will warn you walking down the street and normally you turn left and God say, no, this tonight, don't turn left. Keep going straight down another block and turn left. Mm -hmm. Because God will, has given that to us and we have to, part of discerning is learning to listen to that voice that everybody has. Amen. Everybody has it. But we have to learn how to develop it. So number one, by the, the, the word of God and number two, yeah, I had all these nice C's all planned out. By the counsel of the word of God and by the comfort of God's peace. And number three, by the confirmation of others. You've been praying about something. You, you might even read a scripture that says it seems like this is the answer, but I'm not, I still don't feel quite settled yet. And then someone will walk up to you in the house of the Lord. You say, the Lord was just showing me X, Y, Z. And you know immediately that's the confirmation. Mm -hmm. That's the confirmation. So we need a community. Oh, yes. I'm amazed. I, I, I know I've been preaching that we're coming out of the church age and into the kingdom age, but that doesn't mean you stop coming to church and go to the kingdom hall. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 You, we still need to come together. Yeah. We still need to gather together because we draw strength from one another. Yeah. Not one of us have it all. Believe it or not, I don't have it all. It amazes me, I, 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 and I'm, I'm finding uh, that folks will come to you with answers or questions, not, not answers, but with questions about whatever. Yeah. And I'll give them the best answer I know, and then I will say, I'll tell them the degree to which I am sure about my answer. Sometimes I'll say, oh, it's 100% this way. I've got scripture to back it up. Other times I can say, I'm pretty sure it's this way. But if the Holy Spirit directs you another way, then go with that. And then other times I say, I, I really don't know. I, I just, and, and people get mad at me. So, well, you don't know either, and I'm not mad at you. But, they, but somehow they expect pastors to know it all, be it all. The word of God says we know in part and we prophesy in part. Yeah. I've got a part, you've got a part. Yeah. There's going to be some times when I, I get some things I don't understand. I'm going to get revelation from you. We need one another. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We know God's will from the counsel of God's word, from the comfort of God's peace, and from the confirmation of others. Proverbs 11, 14, another one we know very well. There is where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, counselors, there is safety. That's the problem. That's why there are 30,000 different denominations of Christianity. 
There's about four denominations of, of, of Islam, but there's 30,000. That's crazy because someone uh, had an idea and, and everyone said, no, that's, that's way off. I was talking to someone yesterday who was raised all of his life in a Christian home after the funeral yesterday. And um, he was telling me, he said, I'm a Muslim now, but you know, there's no difference between Muslim and Christianity and Hebrew Israelites. No, they're all saying we're all children of God, we all love God, we're all going to the same heaven, so it's all about love. I said, yes, it's all about love, but we're not serving the same God. Amen. And, and I had to enlighten him and tell him, and I'm, I'm telling you this again, I know I've told you this before, because I want you to know that Islam, the God of Islam and the God of Christians are not the same. The Quran says, and I told him the Quran said five times, but I, I looked it up afterwards. The Quran actually says 13 times, Allah, the God that they serve, says, I have no sons. Glory, glory, glory. And then as I was refreshing uh, my memory on all of this last yesterday, and I was reading about this, and he says, that's why they always say, the Lord, uh, the, Allah is one God. He has no sons. And he's saying that we, we are pagans because we serve uh, uh, multiple gods, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so all I want you to know, I'm only one God. There's not three of me. There's just one of me. And then he goes on to say, and the rest of you are my slaves. In one verse, it said, the rest of you are my slaves. So I was talking to this brother, and I said, you know, so my God calls himself Father God. Yeah. Your God says he has no son. So if you have no sons, you, no daughters, no sons, no offspring, on one occasion it says no offspring, uh, that means he's not a father. He's a master. Yeah. And I said, it's okay, it's okay. He said, you don't have to, I said, you don't have to take my God. That's okay, you can have your own God. Stop calling my God your God. Because your God says he has no son, my God calls himself father. He didn't like that. And, I, and he said, well, aren't Christian servants? I said, yes, we come into the family of God as servants, but as we mature, you know, I gave him John 1. It says, he came to his own, but his own received him not, but as many as received him. He gave them power. See, Jesus receives you. He didn't say right there he receives you as a servant, but he receives you. But he gives you the power, the ability to become the son of God. Yeah. And I said, you know, it's okay. It's okay. You can serve Allah, who is a different God, but he's not the God of the Christians and the Jews. Amen. And I said, he said, well, 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 we're still all Christians of the, or all children of the creator. I said, no, Allah, even though he says he created everything, you're still not his child. You're his slave. It's okay. And so I said, well, let's get off that. Let's talk about this other book. Because he couldn't defend it with the Quran, and he couldn't defend it with the Bible, so he had to talk about another book. I said, yeah, let's talk about Mother Goose's uh, nursery rhymes. But no, I said, so I asked him a question. I said, how do you get saved? How, is it, how do you live with Allah forever in heaven? He said, well, you got to do some good works, just like you. you got to obey the law. I said, no. No, in Christianity, Jesus came and paid the price for anyone who's willing to accept that payment. And so now, it's not dependent on how good I am. As soon as I say yes to Jesus, I'm now going to heaven. My performance doesn't save me. Christians haven't figured that out yet. Because I went to church every Sunday for six years in a row. I know I'm going to heaven. I remember going to door to door, witnessing the folks, and I would ask people, are you saved? And you know, everybody is saved when you ask them, are they saved? Yeah. And then I would ask, how do you know? One guy got very insulted by that question. I taught Sunday school for 30 years. I said, that's great. I commend you. Thank you for putting the word of God in others, but 
Have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He said, I've been going to church since I was born. I'm like, do you not understand what I'm saying? I'm asking, when did you ask Jesus Christ to become your Savior? He said, my mother and my father were saved. And so this guy I'm talking to, he said, you got to have some good works. You have to uh, obey Allah's commands to get in. I said, how many of them do you have to obey? What happens if you mess up? He said, well, we won't know till after we die. I said, that's pretty risky, isn't it? I said, in my situation, with my God, not your God, he allows me to become his son. And I know that my work is not based on my performance, how good I am. See, even a lot of Christian preachers preach, if you sin, immediately you're cut off from God until you repent. And you know, as a kid, when I first got saved and I was hearing this, every day I was living in terror. I, I'm thinking, this is supposed to be good news. But now, you know, it's like the, 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 the man in the jungle. Missionaries come to this man in the jungle who is, you know, worshiping trees and snakes and all kinds of things. And, he, and these missionaries come in and say, we've come to give you the good news. And so they say, okay, what is the good news? The good news is all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that means you're going to hell. They say, I'm still waiting for the good news part. So well, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he'll, and he'll save you, and you'll be allowed to go to heaven. But if you sin, you're going to hell. Well, it was good for a second, but now it's bad again. You see, God is merciful. He looks on the conditions of our heart. I don't know why I've gotten so far away from this. But the Bible says it's not Jesus Christ came to die for our past, present, and future sins. Thank God he died for our future sins. Because if he hadn't died for our future sins, you know, all of my sins were future to his death. But he looks at the condition of the heart. Now that's not to use the uh, excuse People, you know, do all the sin that they want and say, well, God knows my heart. Yeah. He knows you're not even trying. Yeah. God says the soul that sinneth continues to sin, continue to willfully uh, rebel against God. Yeah. He said that soul shall die. Yeah. But Jesus came to abolish the law of sin yeah. and of death. Let's get back. My time is gone. Uh, yes, so uh, knowing the, the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding is not just regular understanding, but spiritual understanding. And that was another thing that this young man couldn't understand. He said, he said, you know, the, the whole Trinity thing is it, it, crazy because you're, you're serving multiple gods. I said, no, they're three in one. I, I can't explain it. He said, but the word of God says some things are only spiritually discerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself, the letter said, the letter killeth. You can take enough scriptures and twist them around to say almost anything. He said, but it's the spirit of God that makes us alive. We have to read the word of God with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. God, help me to understand. God, enlighten me. Illuminate my mind. All right, we're going to get through this. Glory. Verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord. That you might walk worthy of the Lord. And this may seem to sound like we do these things, we get this knowledge, we use this wisdom, we have spiritual understanding to qualify us to be with the Lord. No, that walking worthy of the Lord is more so gratitude, yes. appreciation. Mm -hmm. When we get understanding, when we get the knowledge, when we get the wisdom, that doesn't 
that our, our accumulating these things doesn't qualify us. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that qualifies you. Yeah. Again, it's not your performance. You know yeah. It's not your performance. But it's the blood of Jesus that qualifies you. That you might walk worthy. That means, so now that you know what God has done for you, you have a heart of gratitude. Wow. When I was lost in my sins, not thinking about God, Christ died for us. The word of God says, no man comes to the, the Lord on his own. But it's the spirit of God that draws him. Now you know, now you know, now because of that you can walk in appreciation, you can walk worthy, you can work, walk loving God and, and, and showing some gratitude. A lot of people in the world, they're, they're, they're hating on God, cursing on God because they're not aware of the goodness of God. But now that you know, walk worthy, show your gratitude to God, fully pleasing him. All through the pandemic and even till today, I say, you know, this virus isn't going to take me out because I've been inoculated. And I, I joke that like Enoch, I have been walking with God. Jesus. And I believe it's in Hebrews 11, 5. It says, and Enoch walked with God and Enoch pleased God. Enoch pleased God. So here, like Enoch, it says that you might walk worthy and that and be fully pleasing him. Yes. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. How do you increase, increase in the knowledge of God? God is not obligated to reveal his unknown will until you take advantage of his known will. You increase in the knowledge of God when you apply what you already know. Glory, yes. 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 You already know lying is sin. Don't ask for more revelation. Take care of the lying first. You know flying off the handle and telling, every, giving everyone a piece of your mind is not the will of God. Amen. Take care of that first, and then I can give you some revelation. I can't trust you with revelation knowledge about someone else if you're going to fly off the handle and then make public everything that you know because you're mad, mad or angry or upset. We have to first take care of what we know, and then God will give us more revelation, more knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord. Applying what you know increases your knowledge mm -hmm. of God. Verse 11. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to have to end this soon. My voice is trying to quit before I do. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. He strengthens us with power. I think I said it last week. God gives us, when we're born uh, in, or come into the family of God, he gives us the authority. The authority, which is different from the dunamis power. He gives us the, uh, whew, wow, just left me, it starts with an E. Uh, is it associate power? Yeah. He gives us authority, that kind of authority. But then we need to develop ourselves, develop our relationship with God. When we come into the kingdom, we have the authority. Uh, Galatians 4, uh, verse 1 says, uh, Though we are sons, we are, and Lord over all, we are treated like servants with tutors and governors, bringing us up to where we need to be, before our authority can turn into power. Wow. Oh. Not only do I, am I authorized, but now as we do these things, we get the power of God. We can change the laws of nature. We can reverse sickness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can know things that, that no one has ever told us. 
We can give words of wisdom. We can tap into the to, to God's uh, unlimited source of knowledge and wisdom and power. Yes. We, we're authorized to do that. We, we, we qualify now because of Jesus Christ to have that power, but we have to mature yep. to operate in the power. Yeah. Oh, yes. The whole world is invited to salvation, mm -hmm. but only those that accept Jesus Christ are invited to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then those who are filled with the Holy Spirit are then invited to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Yes. So it's a process. And so often, so many Christians, we, we stop early on in the, the process. So many Christians, we come into salvation and expect all of the benefits immediately. But Jesus said, come and learn. Yeah. Jesus told his disciples, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. When you keep my commandments, I and the Father will come and make our abode in you. And then you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, then, then. Hallelujah. So verse 3 says he strengthens us. Verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He strengthened us and he qualified us. We could not, cannot qualify ourselves. We cannot do enough good things. And this is what I was trying to get this brother to see yesterday. You don't ever know how, how many things are enough to please Allah Except, you know, there is an out call in the Quran. It says, if you kill an infidel, you'll be guaranteed a spot in heaven. And I don't know about you, but uh, your God of peace, as you say, uh, your qualifications, your guarantee to heaven is to kill somebody else. My God says, love your neighbor as yourself. Pray for them that curse you and despitefully use you. Bless them. That's what my God, my God is the God of peace. Yes. My God is the God of love. Yes. Your God is the God of peace by submission. If you don't live in peace with me, I'm going to kill you. Why be a servant of a God who forces you to do his will, to have any kind of authority or, or fulfilled promise? In his kingdom. Why not come over here and be a son of God where everything he has automatically belongs to you? Even though you're not walking in perfection yet. Even though sometimes you still fumble and fall. Sometimes you still, you know, lose your temper. Sometimes you still don't get everything right. And God says, You're still my son. Because he sees you in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He qualified you by the blood of Jesus Christ. Saints are those who are washed in the blood, not those who are approved by the Pope. I just heard what the Pope said uh, Friday or, or yesterday, maybe I forget. He said, it's not a crime. This is what the Pope said. It's not a crime to be a homosexual. And he said, God is a God of love. I said, you're sounding just like that. I'm not condemning homosexuals any more than I'm condemning anyone else who sins. And we, as the people of God, we still have issues in our life, and we should condemn others because their sins are different from ours. Amen. Some of us have been saved for 40 years, and we still, we get in a jam, we tell a lie just like that without thinking about it. And if you get on their nerves hard enough, they might still dig up some of those old four-letter words they haven't used in a while. Yes. But God looks for the repentance. Those who want to turn to him say, God, I can't handle life. Yes. Sounds like a good opportunity to put in Matthew 28, 11 through 30. 11, 28 through 30. 
says, come unto me, all you that are labored and heavy laden. Those of you that are beaten up by life. Those of you that realize that you cannot figure life out. No matter how successful you are, no matter how many Ivy League institutions you've gotten degrees from, life still will slap you upside the head. Yes. Yes. You can still be addicted to some substance, alcohol or drugs. Your wife, your husband will still be unfaithful to you. Despite all the people that you love in your life will still die. He said, come to me and learn of me. And he said, my yoke is easy. I'll help you get through this thing called life. There's only one way to be successful in life, and you cannot do it apart from Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. I didn't even get close to as far as I thought I would. Uh, yeah, verse 13 says, and he delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of, his son, of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So verse 11, he strengthened us. Verse 12, he qualified us. Verse 13, he redeemed us from darkness. Mm -hmm. The book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5, when I was in, in, in uh, uh, Christian school in seventh grade, they made us learn Ephesians chapter 5. In 5, 8 through 14 says, For you were once darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Darkness is damnation. Light is redemption. He has redeemed us from the darkness. Darkness, as I said a couple weeks ago, darkness symbolizes ignorance. We already started this whole passage in verse 9 talking about knowledge. Knowledge eliminates ignorance. I've said before, we're all ignorant about something, but we should never be ignorant about the will of God. This was what the Apostle Paul was writing to the Church of Colossae. He said, don't be ignorant about the knowledge. Always have the knowledge of the will of God. What is God's will concerning you? Yeah. If you don't know, keep digging, keep asking, keep yeah. praying, keep searching the scriptures. Yeah. 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 Keep getting around believers. Yeah. Because those that have no knowledge of the things of God, they can only operate in their carnal mind or they can tap into the satanic supernatural and give you an answer. And you don't want an answer from either of those places. It's bad enough that you have your own carnal mind. <laughs> right. You don't need any of Satan's help. No. Mm. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to cut, the, cut short. Verse 15, 14 and 15, uh, we're going to close here. I'm going to read 14 again. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. It is through Jesus, his blood, that cleanses us. It is he, his blood that qualifies us, cleanses us, qualifies us, makes us uh, uh, free from sin. Okay? Second Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a brand new creature. Verse 15, and we're quitting at 15. He is the image of the invisible God. All of this is talking about Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. There are seven things listed here saying who Christ is. Christ is the image of God. You want to know what God looks like? Look and see what Jesus looks like. Look and see how Jesus acted. He often was moved by compassion. So many people get the wrong impression of God reading the Old Testament. They think he's a, a spiteful, hateful God waiting to zap you in your sins. But if you want to really know what he's like, look at Jesus. He is the image of God. Jesus was moved by compassion. Yes, 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 yes. And he healed many. He did. He helped. He, he worked miracles. Uh, uh, that's one thing. Image of God. The second, he's the firstborn. He's the firstborn over all creation. Out of everything that was created, Jesus was the first. He, and it says, it goes on to say, he was the creator. 
It says he's the sustainer. All things were made by him and, 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 and invisible and invisible dominions, principalities, but all things were created him in, through him and for him, and he is before all things. So he's the head, he's the first, he's the supreme. Yeah, don't try and rush this. He's the image of God, the firstborn. He's the creator, he's the sustainer, he's the head, he's the first, he's the supreme. That's who we serve. We serve Jesus Christ, who is, not only is he the son of God, but he's equal to God. Amen. And I will admit, I don't fully understand that. But I know God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, it's true, whether I understand it or not. I will strive to get understanding, but in the meantime, I ask you, God, give me the peace that passes the understanding. Yes. That I don't get hung up on that, and that I don't try to make up my own meaning, my own interpretation. Yes. That's why there's so many denominations. Yes. I don't understand this. Well, this is what it must mean. And if you don't agree with me, we're going to start our own holiness, full gospel, Methodist, Episcopal, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Baptist, righteous of the firstborn church <laughs> of God in Christ and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anyone want to join my denomination? But Paul here is writing to the church of Coloss Colossi or the Colossians, I'll just say, make it easier. He's writing to the Colossians mm -hmm. and he's saying to them, this is who Jesus is. Jesus is God. Jesus is supreme. And it is in him we live, we move, and we have our being. We're nothing apart from Jesus, but but we're not apart from him. And a lot of people leave it there. Apart from Jesus, I can't do nothing. And he's, oh, yeah. Apart from him, I can't. But we're not there. We're with him. Yeah. He said anyone who is united with the Lord is one spirit with him. We are one with Christ. So all the greatness that he has, it's on the inside of us. And God is saying, I want you to mature so you can release the greatness that is on the inside of you. We're going to see the greatness released on the inside of us. And collectively, we're going to see the greatness of God released in this house. And then it's going to spill beyond these walls into the streets. This neighborhood is going to change. This city is going to change. Uh, the, 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 the aftershocks will ripple throughout the city, throughout the region, the Delaware Valley, the state. This is the Keystone State. We should be influencing the whole nation. Yeah. This is where the nation was born. We should be influencing the whole nation with the revival power, with the awakening. See, the church needs revival, but the nation needs to be awakened. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, we'll continue. We'll pick it up uh, next week there where we left off. We thank God for all of you that joined us today. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm quitting just in time. This is the hour of deliverance, and deliverance is taking the land. If you want to be a part of this, all you have to do is say yes to Jesus Christ. You don't have to pay a large sum. You don't have to promise uh, uh, to, 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 I don't know, outrageous promise you start it starts with saying yes to jesus christ he accepts you into the family and then he wants you to learn of him that's the important thing uh he doesn't just want you to come in he wants you to come into the family and learn yeah. with him you can't learn of him uh on the bar stools or in the back alleys you can't learn of him uh in the clubs and the strip clubs and what have you but you learn of him by getting around the saints. It doesn't necessarily have to be a church, but it's got to be where saints gather in a home, in a coffee shop. I don't know, wherever saints gather, and those who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, gather with them and learn about Christ. Sheep hear his voice, but the lambs often only hear the voice of the sheep until they mature to sheep level, and then they too can hear the voice of the Lord. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. Ask God the Father to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Yes. Ask God to give you the prayer language that you would accelerate your growth in him. Yes. And that you can walk into full sonship and have all the benefits and privileges of being a son. God bless you. Shalom. Until the next time. Amen.